Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, this is The World of Wayne. Today I'm going to show you something that's brilliant in the workshop. It's a brand new filament printer, the Kitty X Plus 3. This printer is a game changer, it's probably the best filament printer I've ever owned, and as you can see I'm using it currently at the moment to be making Vincent from the black hole. Now the folks over at Kitty have sent me this printer for review. There's no financial compensation for this. I'm not paid to do a review for this. This is basically my own personal preference of what I think of this printer. And oh, what do I think of this printer? Well, when it first arrived, it's a 25 kilogram box. So you can imagine how big that was getting it into the workshop. But once you do get it in, there's nothing to set up. Basically, it all comes in the box exactly as you see it here. Once you take it out, you do have to do a startup procedure, which is basically, it talks you through on instructions. It talks you through on stickers on the box. It also talks you through in the uh, online guide that you actually get in the screen here. And all it's telling you to do is how to take out the packaging, believe it or not. Take the foam sheet out here, cut the, uh, uh, the cable ties here. All you have to do is um, just undo some screws which lock the Z axis in place so it doesn't rattle around while it's moving. And once you've done that, this thing's ready to go. Now I could blind you with science telling you what the filament light is, what the speed is. All you need to know, this is an ultra speed printer with a build area of 280 mils by 280 mils. It can build a height of up to 270 mils as well. So if you want to make your own superhero helmets, this is the machine for you. Now, the biggest thing about it is that this is in an enclosure. Now, the advantage of being in an enclosure, which I've actually got the top off at the moment because I'm printing in PLA. If I was to be printing in any form of filament like ABS that does need a contained environment, which is hot, this is the machine for you. Because as you see, I can make this fully enclosed. You've got a door on here as well, which uh, keeps everything in one place and it's gonna stop prints warping. Now this is also a really fast machine. I've built the Benchy model that you can just see here. That model built in 32 minutes on fine mode and can print up to 15 minutes in normal mode. So uh, I'm telling you, the test print I did on this was absolutely amazing. But what I'm gonna show you now is just some of the setup of when I first got the machine and how I set the machine up. Uh, it actually comes with its own slicer called Kitty Slicer. And I'm using the slicer at the moment, as I said, to make the Vincent model here, and I'm gonna show you how I actually just made the hat section of Vincent, which he's wearing at the moment, how I use that slicer, transferring it to the machine, and then printing. What's actually printing on here at the moment is the shoulder section. It's actually this section here, but the back end of that. So uh, we are getting there. It's a great project. It's something that I have tackled before, but I've never tackled it on this size. Now, having a printer, an enclosed filament printer in this size, has made my dreams come true. So uh, let me just show you what you get in the box and show you a little bit more about the printer. As you can see, this is a behemoth of a 3D printing filament machine, and it takes up most of my workbench. It has got everything in a closure there. You do have a door at the front. There's also a roof that can go on as well. And this amazing print plate here, nothing has stuck to it so far. It's magnetic, it comes out, and you can get your prints off easily, but this, is what the printer's looking like. Now, as you can see, I've still got some cables ties on the side there. I've only just unboxed this, and the instructions at the side, once you've turned this on, will actually talk you through how to uh, take this apart to get all the packaging out. Now, the printer is fully built. You haven't got to do anything apart from break off those cable ties and take some foam packaging out. So, as you can see here, taking off the cable ties. I'm undoing the screws in the Z axis, which hold it in place during transportation. And as you can see, the instructions on the screen here, and the instructions are also on stickers around the printer as well, tell me that I need to take the foam out of different places around the printer. Now, you do have to do a calibration on it. It comes with a calibration card and all the instructions online teach you how to do that. But when it comes down to your first print, as you saw, I did Benchy first. It looks just like that. It's so easy to use and it starts to print hyperspeed, as you can see on the build plate there. 
That is amazing. So obviously, once I've uh, done Benchy and I had that printed, I wanted to go to something a little bit bigger scale. So I started printing Vincent. And this is the head section of Vincent being built here. Again, you can see how fa uh, fast this is going. You haven't got to worry about prints sticking to the plate. I didn't have an issue at all. But when that was finished, that's what this looks like. It's just been painted up and Vincent's head has come together. So let me show you some of the accompanying items you get with the printer. So this is a quick start guide here. And not only does it show you exactly what you saw on the printer itself, how to unpack it, how to set it up, how to level the bed. It also shows you how to load the filament, which I'm gonna show you in a second, and how you put that in the machine here. All about setting printer temperatures and some specifications there, including how to change the hot end. Now you get two hot ends in this. You get a copper one, and a hardened steel and I'll show you that in a second. You also get a scraper. Now I haven't had to use this in two weeks because the build plate is like a metallic magnetic material. Nothing has uh, stuck to the plate after the print but during the print it sticks like glue. It's absolutely brilliant. You also get a Cat6 cable looking like that if you want to link this to your network. This is a network uh, printer as well. You get these plastic rings here. This is if you've got a uh, filament which has got a different size hole uh, in the middle that doesn't fit on the spool. You can put these in and that will make that fit better. We've got some tools here, some extra screws, a, fru a fuse, and we've also got uh, a spanner in there. Talking the tools, we also have a screwdriver. I haven't opened that yet. Loads and loads of Allen keys, should we need to do some operational maintenance. And remember I told you about the hot end? In the machine at the moment is the copper hot end. This one here is the hardened steel. And this is for really special filaments that you want to print. But uh, that also comes with this looking just like that. We have a little USB drive, which has also got some files on it. And you've seen this earlier on as well. When we do the bed leveling, instructions of how to do that. And this is a leveling card here that you put over to make sure the Z axis is the right distance from the build plate. The one really unique thing about this printer is the way that you actually put the filament in. Now, the filament goes behind the machine. That's why you can't see it at the moment. But the filament is actually stored in a box which keeps it dry as well. I'm going to show you how I install that filament into the box. Once that's done, that's ready to go in the printer. All that's left to do then is to take that, insert it into the machine, and then we can actually thread the filament through a detection system, which makes sure that the filament doesn't run out into the hot head, and you're ready to go. But it does keep your filament dry. So I am going to go into more in-depth details about the printer and how you use it in the next video. But as for now, I'm going to show you what the splicing software is all about. So even looking at close to that machine, you can see a big smile on my face, but it does take up a lot of room. Please, please, please do not underestimate how big this machine is. Now, as you saw, I was building Vincent's face or the face plate. I'm actually going to show you how we do that now. Now, this program comes with their own slicer. It's called Kitty Slicer. Now, I've used lots of slicers in the past. I really like this slicer. So what I'm going to do is going to open the slicer now. I'm going to show you how to use it. Now, this is what the kitty slicer looks like. And as you can see, I can zoom in and out of the build plate here. It's all set up already for my printer, the X plus three, uh, because all of the uh, kitty printers are actually pre-programmed into this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the, the, the face plate that I actually made before. So I'm going to input the file, which is the Vincent face plate. Uh, and I've got that here. So it's the head here. And I'm looking at the uh, head version two. So it looks like this. Now, as you can see, that's far too big 
for the build plate at the moment. So I want to decrease the size of that. And to do that, I just click on this icon here, which is scale. And I can drag in the corners until it turns blue. Then I know it's going to fit on the build plate. Uh, if I want to rotate that on the build plate, I can either click on rotate here and do this manually and put it around. Or alternatively, I can click on this icon here, which is uh, to assign which side I want to face the build plate. As you can see, it's turned this gray color and highlighted it. So when I click on it now, it's going to drop that down into place there. That's pretty much all you need to do. Now you can put your own supports in here, which I haven't actually done yet. I actually like being able to have the program do that for you. Now you over this side, you do tell it what filament you're using and it will pre-program the machine if you're using ABS to have the chamber set up for you. If you've got PLA, it won't heat the chamber at all for you. You can actually have the print settings as well with different formats, to quick, to fine, to high, to extra high. I've got mine on high at the moment and you can tell it what infills to put in place at the moment. Now, it will stick to the plate really well on this printer. If you want to have some extra adhesion, just click on brim and it'll put a rim around the outside there now with this print normally i wouldn't put supports in here because uh with this structure here the actual dome would create supports the only thing that will require supports are these eye openings here and the ear openings here and here but what i'm going to do is i'm going to get it to do the supports for me so to do that all i'm going to do is click on supports and put everywhere once i've done that i click slice now and it's gonna take its time just down the bottom here preparing infill, making infill. And in a second, it will put the supports in place. It's thinking about it, 70%. <laughs> There's a lot of supports that need to go on this model. Okay, and this is what it looks like with the supports. So as you can see, I've got supports, like I said, on the ears and the eyes. These supports come off brilliant. If I turn it upside down, you can see I've got this massive support in the inside. Now, I don't actually need this support because the structure of the uh, dome should print that without that. So if I want to remove them, let's just go back to this here. I can go on to the paint on supports here, click on that. And using my right mouse button, I'm just going to change the size of my brush to eight. That'll do. I'm going to draw a red line where I don't want supports to be. So I'm just going to paint this wherever I want. Go all the way around. I could, I could make my brush bigger, but the Bob Ross in me is coming out at the moment, and I wanna, <laughs> I wanna, I wanna paint it like this. So, once you're happy with where you don't want supports, I think that's enough. I think I've covered everything there. Knowing me, I've probably missed, but you get the idea. I'm going to click uh, slice now again, and once again, it's going to do the support material here. When that gets to 100, as you can see, I missed out a little bit there, but it's taken the supports out of there. So as you can see now, this is the whole thing on the build plate and how it's going to print. And then all I've got to do is once I've done that is click export G code and I save the file. And what I'm going to do is save the file to a USB stick. All I have to do then is take the USB stick, put it in the machine here and then Click this second button down, click on the file, and there's the Vincent file. And if you have a look on the screen here, it shows you what the file is going to look like. Now, it does have an option here to bed level before you print. I've made sure that's ticked. And when you're ready to go, just click play. It will give a warning about I'm printing in PLA. So I need to make sure that the front is open. As you see, I've already got the roof of this printer off. Now, if I was printing in another sort of filament like ABS, as you see, I do have a roof that I can put on this and that makes that fully enclosed. So it will heat that chamber and to ensure no warping happens on the printed model. And I wasn't joking about how much I've been using this printer in the one and a half weeks that I've had it. This is what Vincent's currently looking like at the moment. Still needs a lot of painting, but there you go. So if you are in the market and you have got the space for this, and I've already had a measure of this, and it's basically 52 centimeters wide and deep by about 55 centimeters high. So it is a big machine, but obviously you need it big to be printing some of these big prints that we've got here. Then by all means, follow the link in the description and you'll be able to get this for yourself. But I hope you like that review. You can see in my face, I'm so happy with it. And I've had the machine two weeks now, just so I can get to use it. And in that time, not only have I printed Benchy, the test print, 
but I've already made a start on Vincent and there's loads of prints that I've already done for that, which means I've spent a lot of money on filament lately. But uh, it has rekindled my passion in 3D printing. But I really hope you liked that video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, take care.